My name is Dominic Ojinaka. I am teaming up with Team Salvato to share my story for Mental Health Awareness Month. I got into video games at a really young age, and the first game I ever played was Number Munchers, a math game. I very much lived a uh, a like yin yang type of life. When I was in Texas, so I was very much indoctrinated into football, and I was very much in that side of sports and that kind of thing. But then I also had like another life, my more nerdy friends, you would say. Um, and, and gaming, and I, I loved it. I got into competitive gaming, and, but now I'm in more of the casual side, wind down with video games, that kind of deal. There's something about you know going home after a long day of reality of life and getting into a game and letting yourself edge out your feelings within that game and then going on to the next thing, right? Being part of a gaming community for me means that I have a place to go where I can be a little bit more goofy, I guess. I can be a different version of myself while I'm being confined to other versions of myself, other places. So very much came into my childhood where I was like, had to like push, keep those two sides separate, but they were also like, it was like a dichotomy of sorts. Like one worked to kind of edge out what the other one didn't give me. When it came into my adulthood, I became more of an organizer, very much a different play to my mental health. It made me feel like I was making an impact within a community and helping it grow in ways. And it's still going strong to this day. I developed the club at BSU, the Smash Club. In my youth, in those communities that I was in, I did feel like I could be a different version of myself, but I still felt like I couldn't like be all versions of myself. I get very myopically playing into one idea of it. And that might also been me kind of putting those ideas onto myself, not just the people around me. As it came into adulthood, when I became more of an organizer, I had to uh, fake it in many ways in the sense of showing them this version of myself that I'm not totally confident with, but I have to do it because I am that organizer. Then in another light, I was also, because this is a competitive community for Super Smash Brothers, and I was ranked in the top three within Idaho, like for a long time. So there was a notion of having to keep that up, but within these competitive spheres, it's 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 really hard to be a, an organizer, streamer, like a, a builder of sorts within it, but also be a competitive player because the mindsets needed for them within a competitive atmosphere are like starkly different. So there was a lot of pressure and then that started to really affect my overall feeling of comfort and feeling safe in saying that I'm not as good as I feel I am. There was a bravado feeling that I had to take on and, and look in order to be what they wanted me to be. There would be like a season where we all coming in hard and 10 to 15 people plus every event that we throw. But then there will be other times where it's like, we're barely getting like five people or so. I mainly played Super Smash Brothers Melee. And this game requires you use a CRT TV. We had to hulkingly bring these like huge TVs everywhere. I had like six or seven in my house, these big ass TVs just in like a corner in my house. I had a bunch of TVs, but I didn't have all the consoles, right? I had two consoles. So basically I only had what's two setups at any given time. There would be times when people came but didn't bring their setup. I didn't feel supported in the ways that were like the simple ideas and measures in supporting a community, like being there, and you know bringing some equipment needed like not even the heavy equipment like they could carry it in a bag i was bringing the heavy equipment and there were many a times where i felt like there was so much effort i was putting in so much structure planning and design that didn't come to fruition because people didn't want to show up people who didn't feel good enough not wanting to come and practice and be better in this paradigm of this um game most of the communities have an understanding of like your shit until you're good relish in that idea because you always have you have room to grow right but like you know there's this whole notion of like not wanting to lose and how it feels to lose and and i can understand that you know i had my own um hurdles to deal with, with that too but whenever i would like show up show out and like do things up for people it's 40 percent of the time i'd say it didn't it, it didn't work out in the ways i would like it to 
I know that other organizers before me and after me have that same issue here in Idaho. Having a sense of belonging in my community means that we connect over something, that we have this relatable thing that we connect over, but that isn't the end all be all of our connection, right? That even though it's hinged on this idea of gaming, that it allowed us to connect in other ways. For instance, we would go travel to other states, other places to do tournaments and stuff like that. And those, it was such a connective time because, you know, obviously it's us, it's just us. We're kind of our own crew while other like states and their crews are coming in. So it's kind of like we're representing ourselves and each other in our state and stuff. So it's like, there's that feeling of like camaraderie and connectedness through that. But then also just the nature of like having this game and this community with all of its like memes and particular uh, inside jokes and stuff like that. And having that kind of thing with people, I, I love seeing the people I would play with in, Sma in the Smash community outside because we would have those things, right? We would be able to like speak in this, in this language that we only know, like it's a different type of connection that nobody else would understand unless they're within that community. So the activity that helps with my mental health and self-care is my gym time. I've been going to the gym for over two decades now, and it's really just turned into this time where I could go in there, turn myself off, and just be without having to think about how I'm affecting others in the space that I'm in. Because a lot of what I've had to do within my adult life, but also within my Boise life, being a black man here where I only see, I'm like the only black person I'll see many days um, is I'm very much having to be conscious of how I'm being perceived. So talking a certain way, looking a certain way, being a certain way, which is a, it's a part of me, but it's not necessarily the part that comes most natural and easy. I don't want to always have to smile, always have to be this way. So when I go to the gym, I'm unhindered by those those feelings of needing to appease somebody else, of needing to look a certain way. As an extension to that outside of the gym is that, like I talked about the wind down of gaming. I remember back in the time in the 90s, they were talking about how gaming should not be a, uh, a like a takeaway, a, a release from the world of sorts, right? It shouldn't be something that you can lose, your, lose yourself in to get yourself out of your real world issues. I'm like, what? That's exactly what gaming is. It should be something to pull you away from a second because I think about how much I'm plagued by the thoughts of, of my life and reality, no matter if those things are happening to me right at the time or are like far off, I'm always being plagued by it. But when I can immerse myself in a game in some way, and, and of course a game that allows me to like push into my creativity, my imagination, and also my problem solving, it really pulls me away from those things and helps me reform myself, you know? My best lesson going into life and adulthood and um, understanding how to deal with my mistakes and the negative parts of my of my life or my psyche and such and rather seeing them dwelling on those ideas or those things as like mistakes or negative things but to rather see them as learning opportunities uh, especially if if you have a good understanding of your values and you stand by your, like you, you live by your values, you're always striving towards them, right? Um, I don't see many things as like a transgression on your, on your moral soul or your existentialism, right? It's a, it's more of a, if I make a mistake that goes against my values later on unintentionally without realizing it, then that's just a learning opportunity. I shouldn't beat myself up for it. I'm very much inspired by other people when I see resolve, um, strength of character, vulnerability and others, it like makes me want to be those things more. Even though I'm always looking, like those are all values to me in some some capacity. When I see it in others, it, it makes me realize how apparent it is in me or not. So it kind of makes me do an audit. And then there's another side with, of that within myself. So I feel like I can motivate myself really well if I have empathetic conversations with myself. So a lot of the times I'm in my head talking shit, but when I when I realize that like I need to get built up for something, I start to build myself up in my head. I start to tell myself like affirmations of like what what like why I feel worthy in this world or why other people see me as worthy, you know, and what qualities I bring to this certain situation or something like that, right? 
to allow myself to remember how awesome I am.